Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. We've been looking at a lot of high-end lasers recently on this channel. Things with higher wattages, lots of bells and features, but uh, there are a lot of really good budget lasers out there. And today we are gonna take a look at one. This one comes in under $500. But we're going to see, does it still pack a punch and what can you do with it? So we're going to be looking at the Jinmitsu Jinsuko LC50 Plus. It is a 10 watt dial laser, has I think all the features you need to get started. So if this is something you want to learn more about, stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. All right, so as I mentioned, we are looking at the Jinmitsu Jinsuko LC50 Plus. This is a 10 watt dial laser and SaneSmart was nice enough to send this out for us to take a look at. As I mentioned, this does come in fairly inexpensive at the time of this video. It is about $440 to purchase this laser and that's a really nice price point to for someone wanting to get started with this. Uh, they don't want to have a huge investment, but that low price shouldn't fool you. There are some pretty cool things about this laser that do put it a little bit above some of the others. So let's take a look at some of those features. So right off the bat, one thing you might notice is this is a little more rectangular. So this is actually a 500 millimeter by 400 millimeter working area. So you are getting a little more width out of this one than your typical uh, uh, 400 by 400 uh, dial laser that we've been seeing lately. When it comes to cable management, there aren't a whole lot of things you can do on this open frame lasers, but one of the big things you can do is add some sort of cable chain and they've got this uh, pre-assembled. It's already here. You just need to bolt it down and this really keeps this cable up off of your work area. It keeps things out of the way and then they wrap it around to the side but then also latch it down along the bottom. So, now that, that they are also including an integrated air assist has the hosing in here and on the bottom here they do have an air assist cone. Uh, you can take this off and underneath there you do have your typical brass cap with cover lens so that's really nice features that should help you uh, keeping your laser lens clean you won't be damaging the focus lens if you uh, monitor that and use your air at all time. Now it does come with a small pump and it is controlled through the controller so within Lightburn you can use that air assist on off feature to be able to turn that mode on or off in your layers. It's really nice. The only thing I don't like about this is that the cabling and the hosing they gave you, um, there's not a lot of extra. It sits right next to here and so if you're working with this in an enclosure, which I would strongly recommend you do, uh, it doesn't give you a lot of options for where you place that. I would like to see just a little more length on these just to be able to have a little more flexibility in where you place that. It has a thumb screw on the side here that allows you to adjust the focusing. They do give you a nice little aluminum cylinder for your focus tool, which is good and bad. Bad in the fact that I, I don't like when they're not attached to the module. It's one thing you can lose. However, it does mean you can take this shroud off if you need to and uh, still use it. Um, and so it works pretty well. You just slide the uh, laser head down until it rests on that. Tighten up your thumb screw and you are set. Now the other cool thing they do is they have what they're calling the alignment spacer. I would call it a focus tool, um, but they have a spot right in here. This keeps it housed, keeps it safe, because um, that's one thing is if this is loose and you don't have a place to put it, it's going to get lost. Now, as far as other control, it does have a belt, but it is riding on linear rails. Uh, and so those are going to give you far more precise stability and control in the movement without the wear and the frustration of adjusting your V-slot wheels. Now you do still have belts and tensioners, so you do need to take care of that and making sure that they're tight enough so that they don't slip, but that it will run smoothly. Once you, and it does have little adjustments and lockdown screws on all three corners, one on this rail for your gantry and two on the back for the two sides. As far as safety features, they of course do include a set of very generic laser safety glasses. If you have nothing else than these, great, use them. However, this is a complaint that I've had with every single dial laser manufacturer. Um, these are just very generic colored glasses. These are not necessarily rated to actually be matched to the wavelength of this laser. So you're looking at something in the 455 nanometer wavelength and there's no optical density rating. So uh, this is something that I recommend people, if you don't have anything else, wear these of course, keep your shroud on your laser, 
but put it in an enclosure, get yourself a good pair of laser goggles that are rated. They should say the brand name and their the nanometer wavelength they're rated for, as well as the optical density. I'll have a link down to below to some uh, that I like using. They're rated for this laser and, um, and for most diode lasers in that 455 nanometer wavelength. And they have an optical density of six, so they do provide some very good protection for your eyes. Now, as far as other safety features, they do have this shroud that uh, is just screwed onto the side with these thumb screws. You can loosen them up or take this all the way off if you wanted to. But again, make sure you're protecting your eyes. This is nice that it flips up out of the way. It's going to allow you to make adjustments easier. Check the cone, make sure it's clean. Um, and, uh, you know, it does an okay job of blocking some of the light. However, just remember, it's not blocked from the backside. So if you don't have this in enclosure, you want to be mindful of anybody that goes on that backside. They also have an e-stop button. So while your laser's running, if something happens, you hit that, it should kill all motion and kill the laser. Uh, I'm told they also have a motion sensor so that if you bump the laser, that it should also basically be the same as the stop. It should kill the motion and kill the laser. And then, of course, they have limit switches, and that allows it to home and know its size and area. So, again, that's the 400 by 500. Allow the laser to only go that far, plus it'll know where its home's at, so you should be able to get some repeatability. And one of the nice things they also include with this laser is they have this on just some standard feet with some wider um, base on there that have a rubber, rubber anti-skid plate. Uh, but in case you need to lift the laser up, perhaps you're using it with a honeycomb on your table and you need to get it up higher, or you're using a rotary, they do include a few, uh, four of these uh, risers. Uh, these are, they look to be about an inch and a half extra height and that will help you bring the laser up so if you have some thicker material need using a rotary uh, it's nice to have these in there all right so let's talk about the laser tests that i ran now i typically like to start out with material tests and lightburn does have a really good tool in this so if you're new to laser engraving and want to figure out the best settings for yours i have a video on running your material test in lightburn and uh, that's a really good thing to do to really find out the for your laser and your material how it's running but i'm going to share with you some of the tests i ran on some various material here all right the first thing i ran was some of this craft hobby plywood um, it's uh, about two and a half millimeters thick fairly lightweight and we threw that in the laser took our typical settings and it blew this grid out so this grid was from 50 percent power on up to 100 percent and from 125 to 300 millimeters a minute so i obviously had to pick up the pace with this one so i bumped it up again and ran it as high as 425 millimeters a minute and it was still cutting through fairly cleanly at 70% power and if I flip this around and look at it you'll notice even the one at 60% is almost cut out it just has a little bit holding it on so there's a very clean cuts very fast I think you could almost push this up to 500 millimeters a minute in this material if everything was perfect now when I run these settings I like to back off my uh, highest speed of a little bit a few steps just to ensure that if I run into any glue pockets or voids that are going to give it some problem it still is going to most likely cut through with that little extra speed or a little extra power or maybe a little less speed so um, with this material I would safely run it at about 400 millimeters a minute uh, 80 to 100 percent power and feel confident it's going to get through now of course one of my favorite materials in my shop is three millimeter or eight inch Baltic birch plywood. So I ran the same test. Now this is a higher density. It's a little thicker, a little and a little heavier. So the numbers are gonna come down a little bit, but they actually still perform fairly well. As you can see, even at 375, 100% power, we were still blasting through this Baltic birch plywood. And again, on the back, if you look at that, some of those are just barely hanging on. They would probably punch through just fine. But, you know, for a 10 watt laser to be able to cut through this material at 350, 375 millimeters a minute, I am very pleased with that. So we're looking at a pretty well performing laser for some of these thinner materials. So after that, I wanted to step it up and see, can we cut through quarter inch material? So this is some quarter inch sanded plywood from Home Depot. And again, ran this, the power settings. This was from 200 to 350 millimeters a minute. And at the 300 50 millimeters a minute, 80, 90, and 100% power. We're cutting through this cleanly. 
And on the back side, there again, you see that some of those right in the upper corners, they're just barely holding on. So I feel like we're getting a good test here. And I was fairly impressed on this uh, lightweight quarter inch material from Home Depot that we're still getting some pretty decent speeds. So, you know, as far as a cutting machine for eighth inch and quarter inch lightweight material, um, this thing is performing really well. Now, of course, we wanted to see, can it cut some thicker material? Now, as you get into various solid woods, there's very lightweight material such as poplar and aspen and balsa, and then you can get very dense, thick, heavy material up there in your oaks, cherries, walnuts, things like that. And so, just by saying this can cut through half inch material in one doesn't mean you can do it in all. You're going to need to play around with that, um, make a few passes, uh, maybe speed it up, but go more passes, double check your air assist. There are a lot of variables to play with, but I did try it out on some half inch aspen. And so the first circle is a single pass that was at 100 millimeters a minute, 100% power, and it just did not quite want to get through. So I simply doubled up to two passes, 100% power, 100 millimeters a minute, and it did push through. There is a little bit of charring on the inside there. So it's doable. You, you're going to have some limited success with this if you want a really super clean cut with that caramelization. When you're getting into these thicker materials, um, you're really going to be looking for a higher wattage laser. Uh, and quite frankly, for myself, when I start getting into thicker materials like this, unless it's just something small like this or needing really precise cuts, I'm going to use a different tool than, say, my lasers. Um, they can do it, but they can be really slow. So just keep that in mind. And just to show the different density of wood, this is some cherry that I had a scrap of, and this is roughly a quarter inch, maybe a little bit under. So I ran that too. I ran this through the same two passes, 100 millimeters a minute, 100% power, and it just was not getting through. So um, while this machine does great at thinner, lightweight materials and even some plywoods, uh, your harder woods, it's going to struggle a little bit with. I think if this was an eighth inch, I could get through it cleanly and fine. But again, we're talking about a 10 watt dial laser. Uh, so these lasers are both laser cutters, and, but most primarily a lot of people use them for engraving. And so you can run a similar material test on here. This is using the fill feature in Lightburn and doing engravings. And so now the, this is advertised as having uh, up to 20,000 millimeters a minute speeds. Um, when I went and checked the controller, it was actually locked down at 3000 millimeters a minute in each of the X and Y axis. So I went ahead and modified that up to 10,000. Just my past experience with 10 watts showed me that, you know, 10,000 is gonna be about where we're gonna wanna be at at the high end for engraving. So then I ran this test and uh, as you can see, it's from 5,000 up to 10,000 millimeters a minute and from 10% to 100% power. We do have a nice gradient there. And uh, down here at the 5,000, we're definitely getting a deeper engrave. You can actually feel the depth, whereas up here, it's just barely cutting in, but you're definitely getting some coloration in that 10,000 range. Now, of course, this is gonna vary from material to material. So um, you're gonna wanna run this on a few different things to really get your range on there. But with this, I'm gonna say between seven and 10,000 millimeters a minute is gonna be pretty good for engraving on lighter materials like this Baltic birch or maybe maple and such. So with that information, we can play around with a few projects. So having the engrave and cut settings for a few materials, I wanted to play around with some more realistic projects. And so I started out by doing a quick engraving and a cut. This is again on Baltic birch plywood, and this would be vector based engravings. So I've got my channel logo along with the Saint Smart and the Gen Mitsu logo down below. And these were all done with 8,000 millimeters per minute at 90% power. And the engravings came out fairly well there. They're dark enough without being super deep. And uh, then the cut was nice and clean at 300 millimeters a minute, 100% power. So just a little example of what you can do with just straight shading with a vector file. So really wanting to push this laser and test its quality, wanted to see how well it could do some photorealistic engravings. And so uh, here's an example of one. This is a, a uh, kind of an AIB, and it's got a lot of shading and detail to it. This was done at 7,000 millimeters a minute, 100% power using the Atkinson rendering mode. And as you can see, there's a lot of nice detail in the engraving. You really kind of bring out the different tones and such but I did feel it was a little too dark. So I took another image and this one was a cat. I did this in the Stucky mode at 8,000 millimeters a minute, 100% power. Still maybe a little bit dark on some of them, but you can really see the detail in the fur and the whiskers. 
that is getting down to that really fine precision engraving. So uh, if I spent some more time with these, obviously getting the photo uh, set up properly, maybe adjusting my speeds a little bit more, these would be even more clear. But just by able to seeing that detail in the fur and the whiskers, I'm very happy with the precision and quality of the engravings on these. Now the other thing when we're dealing with cutting is uh, we have to worry about how wide the beam is and that's called your kerf. And the wider that is, the looser your parts are going to fit without any modifications. So there's a file I like to run on a lot of lasers and it's just this little three-dimensional house file. Now this is made out of 1 8 mat inch material. This is solid basswood, it's not plywood. And I did not make any modifications to the file. It is set up for 8 inch material. And I run it just straight to see how loose it is. And this one really came in very tight. And as a matter of fact, on one of these edges, you might be able to see it here. I actually broke it going through because it's just a little too snug. But there's very clean cuts, very tight cuts. And so for doing tight fitting items like this, um, it's nice to know that on this eighth inch material, I'm not gonna have to make major kerf adjustments to the files to get them to fit. So this would be a really nice machine working with some of your kind of tabletop gaming, little miniature type uh, setups like this to where you need to thin material cut into interlocking 3D parts. I'm gonna wrap this up here. This was a good overview of some of the core features of this laser. Again, I feel this is a really good budget laser. Yes, it's only 10 watts and there are higher power lasers out there, but it is performing very well in eighth inch, even into some quarter inch material that is softer weight. And we were even able to get through some half inch lightweight Aspen wood. So this is definitely something to consider if you're needing a budget entry level laser. It's got a lot of the safety features I would look for without a lot of the extra bells. It's got some very nice cable management and the price point at $439 right now that's a pretty good deal considering what you can pay for other high-end lasers if you're interested in this laser i'll definitely have some links down below where you can find out more and if you use those links to purchase them they are affiliate links i do get some credit with the company and maybe a little bit of kickback that does go to help the channel but as always i don't want to pressure into anything just happy you're here for some information so i hope i helped you with that as always if you have any questions about this laser or anything else you've seen in my workshop go ahead and leave a comment down below happy to get back to you as quickly as i can and if you want to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if this video helped you out, hit that like button. All those things go to help this channel, help that algorithm, make sure more people can see this content. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. I'm glad you came by. I hope this was informative for you. And uh, I hope that you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.